It is so much fun to sit in the very front pew and hear all of you sing on this Palm Sunday. You all sing very, very well. Uh, it's just amazing to sit there and to hear the organ. Um, this indeed is paradise right now for this hour. Uh, so much fun to sit up here. Uh, and was overwhelmed too at the honor of being your pastor. And so on this Palm Sunday, I say thank you uh, for that honor as well. And on this Palm Sunday, we remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and remember putting their cloaks down on the road and their palms down on the road. And he's coming in and people are shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. It must have been a remarkable scene. Just imagine yourself on the roadside and hearing those shouts of Jesus, hearing those shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. I have a story for you that I'd like to share in relation to this gospel. It does fit, if you will bear with me, just for a few moments. Lately, I've been racing through life, and I've been thinking that a lot of days I feel more like a race car driver than I do a pastor. And I was reminded of that again this morning. I was racing around the church and I just about ran over Della. I'm very sorry, Della. And Della said, I better get out of the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. So it fit kind of the way I've been feeling lately. So I've got a race car story for you. Something you don't know about me is I love Formula One racing. And Formula One racing is very popular in Europe and all throughout the world. They travel all around. And I got into Formula One racing in a rather strange way. 17 years ago, back in 2000, I, that was 17 years ago. Can you imagine that? 17 years ago, I was backpacking my way across Europe. I spent seven weeks backpacking. And I flew into Germany, traveled all throughout Germany, got to see the Luther sites. Uh, my dad joined me for that portion of it. And then I traveled through Norway, traveled through Sweden and Finland, Estonia. I spent a bunch of time in Spain as well. It was the trip of a lifetime. Well, there was one occasion, there were a lot of stories. I met a lot of interesting people, but there was one occasion. I was on a boat, I was on a ferry from Helsinki to Stockholm. And I did things on the cheap. I had my backpack. I rarely got a hotel room. At most, I would uh, get a hostel or something like that. But I tried to time my travel uh, at night so I could sleep on a train or sleep on a boat, that sort of thing. So I'm on this boat, the Viking Line, and traveling along in the middle of the sea. And uh, I'm sitting in a chair, reading a book. And this guy comes up to me. And forgive the, the impression. Hello, my name is Martin. I'm a ski instructor from Austria. You're an American, aren't you? What is your name? He sounded exactly like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I kid you not. And I said, uh, my, name, my name is Aaron. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm going to join you. So he starts to talk about all sorts of different things. And all of a sudden, he starts to talk about Formula One racing. He says, I was in Finland because I love Mika Hakkinen. Mika Hakkinen is a Finnish race car driver. And I wanted to go to the homeland. And he started to explain Formula and racing, talked and talked and talked about it, and talked about how much he didn't like Michael Schumacher, who is a, a very famous German racer. He liked Mika Hakkinen. And he asked if I knew about it. And I said, oh, I've heard about it, but don't know a whole lot about it. And then we ended, en ended up having a conversation about faith. We talked for uh, several hours about faith and spirituality, and it was really interesting. But he started off by talking about Formula One racing. So fast forward a few weeks later, and I'm in Finland. And my wife was actually studying in Finland at the time, in Joensu, Finland, which is in northern Finland. And I was staying at the house of one of her professors, and had some time to kill one Sunday afternoon and turned on the TV and lo and behold, it was a Formula One race in Spain. And guess what? Mika Hakkinen was doing really, really well, beating Michael Schumacher. 
And I watched the race and I fell in love. I thought this was the coolest thing. These powerful cars, loud engines revving like 18,000 RPM, going well over 100 miles an hour. These Formula One cars can go from zero to 60 in 1.7 seconds. 1.7 seconds, that's fast. And they would go around these corners and they'd pull like three, four, five Gs, like five times gravity. And I read later that drivers can lose upwards of 1,200 calories and lose several pounds of water weight. I mean, this is arduous, really, really arduous, racing around. It's the most incredible thing. That was just watching it on TV. Well, then fast forward. It's September 2001, September 30th, and I got to go to the Grand Prix in the United States at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And guess who was winning the race? Mika Hakkinen. And just so you get an idea of just how incredible it is, I have a video for you of that race. So here we go. That's Mika. McLaren Mercedes coming around. This is the final lap at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He's coming into the home stretch. And you can just get an idea. The cars are so incredibly loud, you have to wear earplugs. So amazing. Here's the final stretch. There's the famous uh, brick start finish line that he passes. The checkered flag goes out. Mika Hakkinen is celebrating. And here he is taking his final victory lap. And people on the sidelines are shouting, Mika! Mika! And people are saying things in Finnish that sounded something like, Misa Kaskuson Hyuva Paiva! I don't know what they were saying. But he's celebrating and people are just so excited. And I was there, I was there, I got to see it as he went by, and it was the most incredible thing. The power of these cars is unbelievable, and when they shift, it's like there's an explosion. Boom, boom, boom. But it was so exciting to be there for that final lap. And this was actually the last race that Mika Hekkinen ever won because he retired later on. So I got to be there for his final victory lap. It was incredible. So I love racing, and the staff will attest, sometimes I race out of the parking lot just for fun. But I haven't heard anybody yet. In today's gospel, Jesus is sort of taking his last lap. He's in the home stretch, you might say. And he's going to the cross. And on that Easter morning, he will defeat death. He will experience victory. But on this day, on this Palm Sunday, he's on his last lap. He's in the home stretch. He was racing all throughout what is now modern day Israel, proclaiming and spreading the good news of the gospel for some three years. And now he's on the home stretch. He will end up on the cross to die for our sins. And then that Easter morning, he'll be raised to new life. And because he lives, we too will live. Our hope lies in Jesus. And he comes riding into Jerusalem, not on some fast war horse, not on some fast sort of transportation. He rides in on a simple donkey, on a rather slow donkey. I don't know, I think the Son of God would surely ride on a war horse, some kind of big steed, but no, he rides in on a simple donkey. And people from the roadsides are cheering, Jesus, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Just imagine what it would have been like to stand on the roadside. Put yourself there. Imagine waving your palm branch, putting your cloak down on the road as a red carpet of sorts as Jesus is making his way in on his final lap. It's a remarkable and amazing thing to, be think, to think of, Jesus making his way in to Jerusalem. So over these past few weeks, Pastor Roddy has been leading us in a study on Martin Luther 
And that's kind of renewed and reinvigorated my own personal study on Martin Luther. And I ran across this following commentary. It's actually from a sermon that Martin Luther preached on a Palm Sunday many years ago. And this is what Martin Luther has to say. Look at Christ. He rides not upon a horse, which is a steed of war. He comes not with appalling pomp and power, but sits upon a donkey, which is a gentle beast to bear burdens and to work for people. From this we see that Christ comes not to terrify, to drive, or oppress, but to help and to take for himself our load. We read further that he came from the mountain of olives. Now the oil of the olive was the symbol of that which soothes. His entry was marked not by the clash of weapons and the cries of war, but by singing, praise, rejoicing, and blessing of God. So here's the good news on this Palm Sunday. The good news in our gospel is that Jesus rides into each of our lives to bring peace, to ease our burdens, to take our burdens, and to work for us. Jesus rides into our life to bring us healing, to soothe our wounds, to soothe our souls. Jesus rides into our lives to go to the cross for our sake, to die for us and for our sins, and then as the message of Easter proclaims to us, was raised to new life. And because he was raised from the dead, we too will be raised. And that is where our hope lies. Like I said, some days I feel like I'm more of a race car driver than I am a pastor racing through life. This past week I had an experience where life came to a screeching halt. It was this past Wednesday. It was Wednesday night, and I was getting ready to leave the church. And all of a sudden, I realized the date, April 5th. And then I realized the next date would be April 6th. April 6th used to be a day like any other day, but now that day, April 6th, sticks up like a rusty nail. You see, April 6th, way back in 2008, our daughter died. Every year, April 6th comes round, and I recall the events of that day, that day that she died. For those, that, for those of you that don't know, she passed away after a major heart surgery. She was born with a heart defect. She died at 19 months old. But that day, April 6th, is a never an easy day. And this day, for whatever reason, it stung a little bit harder on April 6th. This year, the rusty nail that is April 6th stuck up a little higher and was extra rusty. Why? I have no idea. This year, my grief took a form it hadn't taken for some time. I was just mad. Mad that our daughter died too soon mad at the world, mad at God. And instead of pushing my grief down, I just leaned in and held on, much like a race car driver would hold on to a car when it's a bit out of control. I just held on to my grief, and I did my best to make it through the day. But then God rode into my life in the form of a five-year-old boy named Paul. He kind of bounded into my life, you might say. Paul didn't ride a donkey, he just bounded. And he bounds very well, kind of like Tigger. He came up to me and he saw that I was sad and he said, Dad, why are you sad? And I said, well, Paul, this is the day that Helena died nine years ago. He said, oh, oh, okay. Well, Dad, you don't have to worry. Helena is with God. You don't have to worry. And then he just sort of bounded away, and then he roared like Chewbacca. Arr! 
Paul has said this on many different occasions, and it was a good reminder for me. It was a reminder that God rides into our lives to bring us healing, to bear our burdens, and that's the good news of this text. Jesus, God's son, rides into our lives to bear our burdens, to soothe our souls, and to bring us healing. I look around this sanctuary right now, this room, and I know that I'm not the only person facing challenges. I know many, if not all of you, are facing challenges, are facing stuff in this world. Life is incredibly arduous and really difficult, far more arduous than the challenges that a race car driver might face as they're racing. The race of life is, is far more challenging than the race uh, that a race car driver might be in. And I know that all of you have those rusty nails that stick up from time to time that you must deal with. Might I suggest to slow yourself down and listen to Jesus. Listen to Jesus who is saying, I am Jesus, God's son. I have come into your life to help you, to bear your burdens, and to bring you healing. You are God's beloved, and God wants to bring healing to your life each and every day. That healing and that bearing of burdens comes in many forms. Sometimes it comes in the form of a five-year-old boy that just bounds into your life. But slow down, watch for it, and expect the unexpected. God comes to us in a whole variety of ways. And God, after all, raised Jesus from the dead, and God will work to raise you too. You see, we have a powerful God, far more powerful than any Formula One car or anything that you can possibly imagine. We have a powerful God. Jesus rides into our lives to bear our burdens and to bring us healing. This is good news. Amen.